Now, new pictures from a school sheltering displaced Palestinians in northern Gaza show bodies piled up following an Israeli attack. Witnesses say a number of people, including women, children, even babies, were killed execution-style by Israeli forces while they were sheltering inside the school. The Israeli soldiers came in and opened fire on them. They took an old man. The Israeli soldiers stormed the school, took all the men, then entered classrooms and opened fire on a woman and all the children with her, even the newborn babies among them. She, her husband and her eight children together with her cousin. The Israeli soldiers executed those innocent families at point blank. The school buildings are totally destroyed. We found dozens of dead bodies in the classrooms. There is no sign of any missiles or shells. All those who were in the buildings were executed from point blank. The Israeli soldiers opened fire on them. Many families came searching for their children. They found them all killed. They were all killed, executed at gunpoint. Well, Chris Gunnis is a former UNRWA spokesperson, joins us now live from London. Your reaction, first of all, to these pictures which have emerged? Well, it's very clear that there needs to be an investigation. I run a thing called the Myanmar Accountability Project, and we are bringing criminal cases against members of the Myanmar junta. And what you begin with is an investigation. You get witnesses, you compile the evidence, and you make a complaint. Now, I think that there are serious grounds for investigating. By the ICC, there is an investigation open. I strongly recommend that Al Jazeera makes a victim submission on behalf of these victims and their families to the International Criminal Court. It's very hard to draw any legal forensic conclusions until there's been a proper examination of the evidence. But certainly, this would be, appear to be evidence of war crimes. It's also potential evidence of genocide, because under um, Article 6 of the Rome Statute, which governs the ICC, deliberate killing is one of the uh, crimes which define genocide. So I would suggest that this is sent to the International Criminal Court for investigation. But my other reaction is this is the result of Israel being given a free reign to violate international humanitarian law as it sees fit. The signals that were sent by our leaders in the UK, by the Americans and by other of Israel's allies were incredibly weak. It was very clear that, Isabel, that Israel was given a green light to prosecute this war in any way it could. The narrative of Israel has the right to defend itself against Hamas, that was the predominating narrative. And that is what, in part, has resulted in what appears to be a serious war crime, and as I say, it must be investigated. The fact that Hamas may have committed these crimes, and it's clear that absolutely bestial things took place on the 7th of October, they need to be investigated as well. And those responsible need to be held to account. And if that means the International Criminal Court issuing an arrest warrant for Israeli leaders and for Hamas leaders, obviously, then so be it. There must be accountability for the victims of these what look like appalling crimes. We've seen this is not the first instance of civilians dying in civilian infrastructure, right? We've seen attacks all throughout this conflict on schools, on refugee camps. Is, is there a bigger picture of really the undermining of the legal sanctuaries of, of, of these places, sanctity of these Indeed. places? It, it... Indeed, the sanctity and the neutrality of UNRWA, for example, which has given all of its GPS coordinates to the Israelis, refugees and displaced people assumed that underneath the blue UN flag there would be safety and security, and that has to be guaranteed by Israel, the occupying power. That rule in the rule book has been torn up and thrown away. Um, but there is also um, a wider question, um, and that is that under the Rome Statute, again, attacks on civilian infrastructure are outlawed. And there is an international law, the principle of distinction. You have to distinguish between combatants 
and non-combatants. You cannot just walk in to a civilian installation and start shooting people on the grounds that there might be a Hamas operative there, or it might be possible to kill one of the enemy. That is not how international law works, and not to abide by international law, that is a crime. It's a war crime if it's shown to be true, and there has to be criminal accountability. That's what the victims want, and that's what they must have. We've seen right from the beginning of this conflict Israeli officials saying openly that they plan to cut off food, water, electricity and fuel. When we look at the statements that were taken, this was even before the sort of carnage that we're seeing now. We look before a year ago to some of the statements we were getting from Western leaders such as Ursula von der Leyen saying, quote, Russia's attacks against civilian infrastructure, especially electricity, are war crimes, cutting off men, women, children of water, electricity. These are acts of pure terror. We have to call it as such. Do you feel, do you feel disappointment towards Western leaders and we don't hear that same line towards humanitarian suffering that we're witnessing now? Well, there's a clear double standard, but I don't feel disappointed because it's been going on for so long. Israel has constantly been given a get-out-of-jail-free card when it comes to justice. Yoav Galant, who just quoted the Israeli defence minister, said early on in this conflict, there will be a total blockade. No fuel, no food, no water. That shows intentionality. That shows that there was an intention to commit a war crime. And guess what? on the streets of Gaza, in Gaza itself, we are seeing evidence of those war crimes. The same is true of Mr Netanyahu. He called for an Amalek genocide, invoking the biblical injunction to kill men, women, children, babies, let nobody be alive after this attack. That's what the Amalek injunction, Amalek injunction says in the Bible. Mr. Netanyahu actually accused himself, he indicted himself by saying that in public. The other, I mean, we have an Israeli minister saying that an, a, a nuclear bomb should be dropped on Gaza. I mean, that at least did confirm that Israel, at least it seemed to confirm that Israel actually has a nuclear bomb. But again, these are just examples of Israeli leaders indicting themselves. You know, the, the criminal, the International Criminal Court needs to prove intent, but all they need to do is Google some of this stuff that's said, that's said proudly and on the record. There are grounds in terms of the crimes being committed and in terms of the intentionality for arrest warrants to be issued, just as they were against Putin. All right. Thank you so much for your thoughts on that, Chris Gunness.